So everyone's talking about it. There's a brand new 4x4 on the way, but what exactly will be in store for us when we get our grubby hands on the new Ineos Grenadier? Welcome to Building the Grenadier. Over the next 12 months, I've been given exclusive access behind the scenes to find out exactly what the Grenadier will be and how it will be built, from the axles and chassis to the suspension, the powertrain and beyond. Fancy taking a look? Why not join me? Ineos say they're building the Grenadier using a classic 4x4 blueprint, so for them there was only one type of chassis to choose. A letter frame is the only way to build a proper off-road vehicle 4x4. Ladder frames have been the basis for some of the most iconic off-roaders for over 70 years, starting with the Willis Jeep. So you could ask, why would Ineos use anything else? We are not using a monocoque because we are not building an SOE. Strong, stiff, rugged and reliable, ready for mud, sand, rock and snow. And ideal for attaching extra equipment like heavy duty underbody protection or winches and anything else you need in the field. Well, that's the plan. Ineos is creating the ladder frame in partnership with a highly experienced vehicle manufacturing company that has a proven pedigree of making ladder frames that can tackle the toughest environments. So the engineers are in no doubt at all. The Grenadier skeleton will be a box section ladder frame. Now they'll happily give you a whole load of science and stats to explain why, but for mere mortals like us, the bottom line is absolutely clear. The ladder frame is super strong and a really well proven 4x4 platform that over decades has helped aid organisations, conservationists, explorers, foresters and of course farmers work harder. For a 4x4 to get the job done, no matter how punishing the conditions, the Grenadier engineers feel that beam axles front and rear are essential. Beam axle is the most robust design we can provide for this vehicle. Ineos looked long and hard for the right supplier for the Grenadier's axles. They chose Carraro. Why? Because of their long history building tough four-wheel drive vehicles, including tractors, making them the perfect fit for the Grenadier. As you can imagine, there's been a whole lot of debate about whether the Grenadier should have independent suspension or beam axles. Now, both setups, of course, have their pros and cons, but on balance, the engineers have decided that beam axles are gonna be more robust, less vulnerable to damage, and ultimately much more likely to keep you going when the going gets tough. Beam axles front and rear, and a box section ladder frame. Ineos's vision for a no compromise foundation to their ultimate 4x4. So the ambition is clear. They're starting with a blank sheet of paper. The Grenadier is being designed and built from the ground up. 
every component chosen by engineers at the top of their game and that's got to be very good news. Join me next time when I'll be trying to find out more about the suspension setup. The much talked about INEOS Grenadier is on its way and I'm continuing my journey behind the scenes to find out exactly what the engineers are up to. INEOS has pulled together an international team of specialists to bring the Grenadier to life. There are around 60 companies already involved and one of the key players is based here in Austria. Tractors, trucks, 4x4s, Magna has over a century of experience developing and building some of the world's toughest off-road vehicles. A good fit for this ambitious project. It feels like there's a bit of a Grenadier takeover here. There are around 100 engineers working on the project and 15 in this design office focused on creating a suspension setup that meets the needs of people who use their 4x4s for work every day. People like Billy Milne, putting in the hard yards, looking after a large estate in the wilds of Scotland. The terrain is tough, punishing, challenging all year round. So Billy knows exactly what he wants. An ideal 4x4 should be fit for purpose. It should be able to go where you want to put it. And it's got to have a good suspension system that rides through everything that's given. You want something basic, well set up, that does the job. So there's a big expectation here. The best possible ground clearance, constant traction, and high axle articulation and suspension travel. So how are the engineers at Magna creating the ultimate 4x4 suspension? Well, by taking apart the world's most renowned off-roaders and benchmarking them, exploring three main options, leaf spring, coil spring, or airbag then using CAD to develop a theoretical new model that combines the best engineering ingredients to create something even better. And their conclusion? Well, there was only one way to go, it seems. Coils and heavy-duty dampers. I met up with Magna engineer Matthias Mayer to find out more and to get an exclusive look inside their top-secret workshop. It's brilliant to see the suspension actually bolted to a chassis. And, and this is the Grenadier chassis now. Yes, you're right. It's Without, impressive. It is really, really impressive. You've clearly gone with coil springs yeah. here. Why? Coil spring is, in our uh, view, the best option for this vehicle because we can have here a progressive spring curve. This means the stiffness of the spring changes depending on the load. Add separate dampers and huge energy absorbing bump stops and the engineers believe they've created a unique package. So, underneath, two really hefty big bottom links and then two slightly smaller top links. That's right. This gives the stability against the rotation in, the, in this direction for brake torque and so on and also good stability uh, during the driving. These four really strong links help stop the whole axle twisting or moving forwards and backwards. Back in the front then, we've got one link here, the panard rod, mm -hmm. that goes from the chassis over here. To the axle. And its purpose? Is the guidance in lateral direction. So to stop the whole axle moving yeah. from side yeah. to side. You have to be strong because more or less the whole axle load in lateral direction guided by this link. So this has to be massive. And it's the same setup at the back. Where have you got to now in terms of developing the final suspension for Grenadier? Yeah, so we have a great uh, prototype setting now. We have a real great ground clearance, very high distortion angles on the axle itself. This enables a good traction on every off-road terrain you can think about. And of course, we have a real high wheel travel. This enables a good drivability, even in empty condition, and also with a trailer on it. 
There's no electronic control on this at all, there are no wires anywhere. Yeah, so there is completely free of electric components to be robust, to be easy to maintain, also to have easy access to all parts. I tell you what, after months of only being able to look at computer-generated models of the suspension, it is so cool to finally be able to touch some real parts. But these are prototypes, of course. There's a whole heap of testing and fine-tuning to go. There's a bloke in Scotland, I know, who will be desperate to get his hands on this stuff and to show it a bit of good old-fashioned Highland hospitality. Hopefully, they will get it right. And if they listen to the people that's out there that's working the ground, working the land, and need a good rugged 4x4, I hope they get it right. I hear you, Billy. Clearly, building a rugged 4x4 is a huge challenge, but getting it right is exactly what INEOS are focusing on. That's why they've got the best people working on it. And I have to say, their confidence is impressive. I promised you exclusive access behind closed doors. Well, there you go. You're the only people who've seen that. Well, that's it for episode two of Building the Grenadier. Join me next time to find out more about the engineering of this radical new 4x4. Right, I catch up remotely with some of INEOS Automotive's senior management team to find out how they're handling the coronavirus challenge. Can you give me any, any examples of where it's been tricky? Every shape that's created on the front of the rear of the vehicle must respect the approach and the departure angle. Otherwise, as you quite rightly said, people will not see this as fit for function. Essentially, the Grenadier's base is going to be in Wales. Why Wales? Well, we wanted to be able to create our own identity. What we wanted to do was have our own facility. We didn't want to take somebody else's. We wanted to create something specific. Oliver, it's great to see you. What are the, the really big challenges to conquer from your point of view? To have the digital uh, engineering done, but now you have to actually put it in the physical world, and this is ahead of us. Dirk, thank you very much for finding some time to speak to me. I know you're a very busy man. So what, what stage are we at now? Coming out of COVID, coming out of that crisis, we have lost some time here, and we need to make it up. We are not jeopardizing the quality, so we need to find ways of testing uh, very hard, very rigorously. What is that photo on the other side of you? That's actually a, a picture of uh, the winter testing. That is the Grenadier? This is a, a Grenadier prototype running in Sweden, yes. When will the world get to see it? I think it's a matter of weeks now. You can look forward to it soon. Welcome to a very special edition of Building the Grenadier. After all the talk, all the speculation and all the planning, INEOS Automotive is finally prepared to let us see the exterior of their all-new 4x4. So, here you go. I bet that's got you talking. Well, this is the man behind what you've just seen. His brief was very clear. Design the ultimate utility 4x4. This is a very big day for Grenadier. Yeah, it's been a few, few years of pretty hard work. This is a very exciting day because it's the first time really that everybody can see what we've been busying ourselves with for the last few years. Revealing the finished look of the car so early in its development, most manufacturers wouldn't dare do that. I think because we're not really restrained in the way that big manufacturer would. We don't have to protect a, an ongoing line of vehicles. You know, we, the, the view is that yeah, we, we just need to be really open about it. Yeah, we'd much rather get the actual car out there, test it, like to be nice and open. Why wouldn't you be? The story about a pub in London, the Grenadier, yeah. a bunch of blokes having a few beers and coming up with this plan to build the ultimate yeah. off-roader. Is that really what happened? Or was it a much more conventional brief to you? No, to it, it pretty much was exactly <laughs> that. It seemed that the sort of last of the, the proper utility vehicles were we were about to stop. There was, there was a character about them that we all kind of felt we were going to miss. And, you know, you look around and there was nothing that was, was really very appealing. And, you know, Jim being Jim, let's do something about it. And as we basically worked out what it was about the, the character of these older vehicles, what was the DNA that gave it that character? And as we understood more, you start to see why these vehicles start to look in the way that they do. You know, we, we didn't sort of set out to 
make it look like anything else. It was just, it was always so sort of engineering led. Function always wins. Where did your influences come from in, in the way you creatively thought about the design? You know, right at the beginning, I remember saying, we've got to design something super practical, really well built. If we can think of it in, the, in these terms now, all the rest of it gets kind of built onto there. If you look at any of the older, you know, the Pajeros or the Nissan Patrols, or the old Defenders, there's a real kind of un easy to understand um, sort of visual on them. You can see how it goes together. There's no sort of clever um, disguising of, of A and B pillars and it's just very logical. You can see that's that's a structural beam, that's where something fits in. So, and I think that makes it a very comfortable thing to, to live with. So take me through in headline terms the design we've just seen, the exterior. It's not a very complicated vehicle. You know, it has got that sort of boxy design and that's really a result of a, a wheel in each corner, a ladder frame, then an engine of a certain size which needs a certain number of radiators and cooling and space for crashing and obviously all the sort of departure angles and the entry angles and that sort of stuff which we've been tried really really hard to respect. We have a round headlight which again is about the sort of simplest form of a headlight you can get. It's almost like there's a tube that runs through and then there's a rear light that's also round as well. We've got things like this sort of built-in utility rail and things that are kind of there. It's a canvas for people to go and build upon. I kind of see it. Here's a vehicle that is massively capable off-road, but it's kind of up to you to sort of go and, and make it your own. Down to the rear doors that, you know, we've got a split door, we've got a really thin one that you, means you don't have to open the big heavy door with a wheel on it. You can just open the little door, put your tool bag in there, close the door and off you get it. It's not a difficult, complicated route. The look is kind of interesting though, isn't it? Because clearly it has to be functional. It's got to, mm. it's got to get the job done. It's got, to, it's, it's got to work, particularly for those people who are going to work it. Now, but, but, should it but that, that's often engineer-led. So like the wheel arches, for example, you just mentioned, that wasn't anything to do with styling. That was going off with the engineers and driving this thing as, as on the most extreme off-road that they can. What's the limit? You know, how much space do we need for these wheel arches? That's what we went with. Then that sets up a quite interesting sort of design parameters there. So you say, well, we can't touch that because that's, that's starting to compromise the performances. It's function every time, but actually you've still got to sell it. It's still, yeah. got, to, it's still got to look good. Because it's been sort of engineering led. It doesn't mean it has to be ugly. You know, I think, again, in the same way that don't, you don't have to build it badly because it's you know, a working vehicle. We can still make it look good and interesting and really consider every square millimetre of it. I'm sure it will continue to develop and also there's the sort of pickup version as well. It's going to be following hot on the heels, I think. Oh, so hang on. So yeah. I've always had it in my head that the station wagon is going to be the vehicle that is the Grenadier. Yeah. There's been lots of discussion about, well, yeah, but hang on, I want a tipper and I want a pickup truck yeah. and I want this and I want that. Is that already, you're thinking about that now? Yeah, certainly. And uh, certainly the sort of double cab pickup is, is something that we've been working on in parallel. But yeah, certainly that's the mindset, is to make it a proper family. <laughs> because as a working tool, that is so important to, yeah. to end user. Yeah, and, uh, and I think that's part of the whole spirit of this sort of vehicle is that there's not a single use for it and people do like to, to modify and adapt and, and build onto existing vehicles and so that's always been in the back of our minds. I know from personal experience that vehicles that I love very much that are utility vehicles are, have not been comfortable. I enjoy it but I have to really kind of put up with some suffering to, to yeah. get that enjoyment and why why should that be the case? Well, I think I think that was the a lot of the, the thought was that you know you don't have to make it badly, you don't have to suffer just because you're using your vehicle to go to work in. You can be comfortable, you can be dry and warm, obviously you're going to work with it, but you know if you are using it as a sort of recreation vehicle, you know, they, it's, it's still engaging and it's fun, but it's also comfortable. Um, and that was a really a, a big driver, I think. Are there elements of, of what we're looking at now that for you were kind of almost eureka moments. So much work went into that bonnet. And there's there a really good good moment on that actually where they're saying actually we need an extra two centimeters for the uh, pedestrian impact. And uh, it's all right, you absolutely 
everyone's checked that we can't get the engine any lower. No, it can't be any. So can, can we see the engine? There's a big plastic cover on the top of it. And uh, I said, well, do we need the plastic cover? No, no, that's just how the engine comes. OK, well, if we take that off, oh, no, it's fine then. You can't have known when you started this how it was going to turn out. Is it kind of how you thought it would turn out? I think probably about a year ago, I thought, yeah, that, this is, it feels really right now. And it fit, and that's, yeah, I got very comfortable with that. And so then it's just sort of got better and better. Every time I go into the studio now and see it, I don't, you know, I'm, I'm really comfortable with it. We've, we've seen the clay. There's some more work to be done on that. So what happens now then? I mean, we're, we're pretty happy with with most of it. So there's a, as I say, there's a few details that, that need to be uh, resolved yet. But also we've obviously got to do our testing, which we you know, want to do in sort of plain sight because we're, you know, we're, we're partly because we're all really excited about it. I, I, I don't see any problem in, in in kind of doing that openly and um, you know, welcoming uh, feedback and comments. And you know, it'd be great to get people to actually test it and, and drive it. And so we can, you know, make a, a truly uh, brilliant vehicle in the end. I hope that's given you a real sense of what the Grenadier is going to look like and why. And yes, I know what you're thinking. You want to see more, don't you?